Fairfield Public Access Television is for you. I'm Susan Kessel, and today we have with us Lee Gobble and Ben Taylor. I feel like I'm in really good company here. We were just talking that uh, you both have been Citizens of the Year for Fairfield, and um, I've known both of you for a very long time. We had Lee on our show in December, and he shared his postcards with us, and that was so much fun. Uh, that he brought along his friend today, Ben Taylor. Now, I've known Ben, I've known you for years uh, at the Carnegie Library Museum. You were in charge for, oh my goodness, you spent hours and hours there. Um, do you remember when you started? After I retired from the ledger, Paul Sells thought we ought to go to work at the <laughs> library. So it's about 30 years ago, I guess. Wow. So you worked at the Fairfield Ledger. Yeah. Um, give us a little brief history about yourself. Were you bo born in Fairfield? Yes. I was born up over the diamond store on the corner of the square. America's Diamond? America's Diamond. And I just live a couple of blocks south of there. Never been that farther away from home than that. So those are the two places that you live. Yeah. Wow. And Lee, you grew up around Fairfield too. So um, I won't ask your age, but are you? Were you close in school? Did you know each other in school? We're five years apart. Okay. I got out and he came in to <laughs> high school. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, when did your friendship? Uh, happen? Was that afterwards? We were born into it, I'd say. What do you think? It started with parents and grandparents. Really? They were friends? This would be a third generation. And Friendship. I had an older brother who was Ben's classmate. Okay. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. um, and you share a lot. Uh, you have a lot in common, I think. You both love antiques, collecting. And we both eat. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I see you both out eating together. That's great. I think that's that's wonderful that you do this together. Do well, you... one of the amusing things when we go down the road is try to think of somebody's name, <laughs> and I'll give Ben. You have two miles to that to that crossroads <laughs> to come up with that family name. Does it work? <laughs> yes, every time. I I think I need to do that sometimes too. Um, so, Ben, back to you. You grew up in Fairfield, and then you worked at the Ledger. Was that right out of school? Yes. Uh, out of college. Uh, out of college. Parsons? Well, yeah. didn't you start as a carrier, Ben? Oh, yeah. I so you can come all the way. Wow. What did you do at the Ledger? Well, I was advertising manager the last official title I had, but I worked in several different apartments. Uh-huh. Okay, and so then you got to retire and Paul Sells asked you to go to the museum and, yeah. and help. How many years did you spend doing that? Oh, I think it was 25 or 30. I, it seems like a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I remember when I was at the Art Center in the basement of the Carnegie Building, um, and that is 33 years old, I would say, um, when they redid the library, and you were probably there before that. And I know that you and Paul cataloged a lot of um, museum articles, took in the donations of articles and then cataloged them? Well, the, the most extensive thing we did was rebuild nearly all of the cases and rearrange the, the uh, platform. When the high school burned, they had an auditorium on the west side of the upstairs, the third floor and uh, it made a good place for a study hall. And then after the, the high school 
got built and uh, they moved there while we lowered the sliding floor in the auditorium and leveled the floor and built cases around the sides. Uh huh. So, um, what we're going to talk about today is you do collect a lot of things. I know you're into quilts, and um, but you have an extensive Lincoln collection. And this being February and President's Month, uh, Abraham Lincoln's birthday and George Washington's birthday, we thought it would be really fun if you brought some of your Lincoln items and shared them with us. And Lee is going to fill in once in a while. He's got a, a book here and, and I think has some things of Lincoln too. Let's start with these things we have in front of us. Um, well. The thing about collecting Lincoln items, every millionaire is in the same business. And there aren't that many Lincoln items to go around, so that whenever a Lincoln item shows up, it'll be gobbled up by somebody <laughs> that can pay several thousand dollars for it. And uh, the prices have gone steadily up because the Items are getting scarcer and scarcer, letters and one thing or another. There are no new photographs. This has been discovered for several years. They're all cataloged. The uh, Lincoln item that why I'm interested is back in 1913, the Chautauqua program features a Benjamin Chapin, who was a Lincoln impersonator. And this man is my father's second cousin. Um, and this was Chautauqua days in Fairfield. Yes, in, in 1913. Why don't you explain a little bit about what Chautauqua, though most people only know about Chautauqua Park. Well, you know what? I'm not sure I'm the one well, to explain that. Ben, Can ben, you let, explain ben, that? Well, I don't know much more about than that, but every summer they had this lecture series. You see, that was the forerunner of TV and all sorts of public television, uh, public programs, radio included. So. Uh, I was particularly interested after that man who had been here. And that took place in Chautauqua Park in, in a bandstand. In a bandstand. And William Loudon had, had uh, built some restrooms and some stage facilities. And uh, it was quite popular, but it was formerly a Billy Sunday tabernacle. And uh, the building was so spread out that one heavy snow, mm. the roof caved in, so they had to tear part of it down. But it lasted for, I think the last paying programs they had was in 1930. I took the tickets out there for them. Well now, uh, there's a lot of peculiar things show up. Here's a photograph that I thought was really old, but I come to find out it was uh, produced by a, a studio down in Bonaparte and uh, <laughs> Kiyosakwa from 1895 to 1905. Now, it's a photograph of Lincoln, and when you first look at it, you think it's really old. This one is cataloged as O91. So they, they got them all pegged down. I did read just recently where uh, Lincoln did have his photograph taken quite frequently and that he would have some with his beard and some without. Um, do you have some well, of those? The beard, some little girl wrote to him and thought he'd look better with the beard. With a beard. This, and when he was inaugurated president the first time, he did not have a beard. 
Uh, now there is quite an interest in the Lincoln Highway. And this is a colorful design, but the, their actual Lincoln Highway signs were much larger, made of a galva or a enamel material, and it was the first. You see, when the automobile manufacturers got the cars to going, they didn't have any place to drive the cars except on mud roads. They got organized then and and uh, marked and helped create across from coast to coast, from New York to California, the Lincoln Highway. So uh, now they're trying to res restore some of those early roads. And of course the highway system is all by numbers and by states. Mm -hmm. So it's been an interesting thing to see. Well, we've just had a first uh, for FPAC. We just had half of the power go off in our studio. So we were rudely interrupted <laughs> by that, but we're all back together now. So we're going to continue. And we were talking about the Lincoln Highway, um, the original highway that was made to go across the United States. And, uh, also known to some people as Highway 30. Highway 30. Okay. East and west through Cedar Rapids. OK, so right through Iowa. And what do we have here, Ben? The other personal thing that I have is two political buttons when Lincoln ran for president the first time. Uh, this one button, the round one, had belonged to my wife's grandfather who fought in the Battle of Shiloh. And he had saved this, and another man that I knew in Fairfield gave me the second one. Pretty nice little political buttons. The Ford Motor Company, which builds the Lincoln cars, had a contest, essay contest, and this is the Lincoln Penny that they gave as awards. I didn't win it, but this one was never given to anybody. Where it's did you come across that? A wounded auction sale or antique place. The uh, most unusual thing as I have, a man by the name of Borglum made the Mount Rushmore. And in 1912, he made this little statue. It's signed here on the side, 1912. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is not quite the same Lincoln that's on the the mountainside, but it's it's very interesting. What is? Do you know what this is made out of? Just plaster. Just a plaster. See, but it is signed. Somebody, it, is, it is signed. This I bought as a reproduction. It's the White House china that was selected by Lincoln's and Haviland, made by Haviland Company, and was used in the White House. So this was, uh, does every president get to select their china? They, yeah, they each had their own. And so this was, uh, this, what? Lincoln s selected this. Oh, how nice. This is a whole, that's only one piece of the whole set, you see. Would you assume Mrs. Lincoln, what I've heard about her, that she did the selecting, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> now, while we're talking about Mrs. Lincoln, did did I hear that she had a mental problem? Um, well, not until after. You see, they had three sons. Two of them died. And uh, with the assassination and everything, it did tax her abilities to handle And that was later, yeah. later in life. Incidentally, we live pretty close to Mount Pleasant. And Mount Pleasant has an interesting home down there where uh, uh, Senator Harlan had the home, and Senator Harlan's daughter married Lincoln's son, the last surviving son. And they spent some time in the vacations, summers, at the Harlan home in Mount Pleasant. So uh, uh, there are a few personal things down there that belong to the Lincoln family. 
Now is... Is that is, part of the Iowa Wesleyan campus? Yeah. Okay. And is, is one of those, are they buried close to in our county or something? Am I remembering something else? Yes, what? One of the relatives buried in our county? No. Uh, I think you're thinking of uh, Ann Rutledge's mother. Yes. Is buried down near Birmingham. <coughs> but there was no no real facts attainable about the relationship between Ann Rutledge and Lincoln. Okay. This is simply a, a sample of the things you can find. This is a 19 calendar, 1910 calendar, and 1910 had nothing to do with Lincoln, but uh, they used his picture, so it makes a pretty nice showpiece. Well, that's about it, I think. On those pieces, and then we also have, Yeah. and we'll be very now careful the, with these. The thing, the thing that we can, Maybe we can find every once in a while are these postcards. And uh, this set here has a flag in the background. This is all the same series. I think there's, uh, Six. I don't know where the other one is. When would these have been published? Oh, it was a great urge. Let's just do it right like this. Urge after okay. everybody wanted to get something to sell. And it was after, after Lincoln was assassinated that... Uh, what year was that? 1865, or shortly after that. Mm -hmm. Now here's here's Lincoln and supposedly Ann Rutledge. This is all made up, of course. An interesting fact in my family history is I know on one side of my family, my father uh, was related to the Booths, and on the other side, my mother was related to the Lincoln. <laughs> <laughs> Had a little conflict there. <laughs> right. Now these aren't very expensive, and I can afford them. There's all sorts. Now these you've collected over the years. Yeah. Well, would these have been come out like a hundred years later, 1965, or? No, they came out soon after Lincoln was assassinated. Oh, really? Good. Yeah. So these a lot, are a lot of these were, fairly old. Were printed in Germany, and. Uh, This is a portrait. Now, is this his, uh, supposedly his signature, probably written on there? Yeah, that's his signature. Um, something that I find, we'll, we'll just hold this here and let the camera focus on it. We can talk a little bit about Lincoln. Um, he's known for having lost so many elections, so many things that he ran for, he lost. Um, is that true? Well, yes, it's true. And of course, when I was talking about the home in Mount Pleasant, Lincoln was never in this corner of the state. He did own some land in Iowa, but that was a, a bonus for having served in the Army. And uh, he only he made a couple of trips into Iowa when he had a case for the railroad company in a, over a bridge. Mm -hmm. Well, that's about takes care of this. So, um, is this one of your outstanding collections? Is this well? It's the easiest one to move around. Okay. <laughs> And I know that you do have a nice quilt collection. You and your wife used to uh, um, collect quilts, and you have some very nice ones from Jefferson County. We have one block. I, I didn't want to bring that because it's a quilt block called Lincoln's Platform. 
uh -huh. made up mostly of red, white, and blue. And is that a real old piece? No, a woman made that because she knew what the pattern was and that I was interested in making and made that for me, just oh, one single nice. block. Now, Lee, you have a book with you. Um, mm -hmm. Tell us about that. Well, when we think of collecting, we think of attics. And uh, our family attic moved from a moon only once. So we have held on to some things that, you know, each move you lose a little, or what can you keep and what you discard. And so it moved from Abington to Fairfield in. Uh, 1896, when it was time for my father to come to to go to high school, because uh -huh. my grandmother said we're moving to Fairfield because it has church every Sunday, <laughs> it has a library, and it has a high school. Sounds like she was very progressive. Yes, quite a lot of vision there. Well, I found found this book among the things that have gone from generation to other, and it says. Uh, it's from my dad to, from his mother, and here it shows in the, his uh, private library. And his name was Bruce. Uh-huh. And it says, Bruce, may you imitate the virtues and integrity of the illustrious subject of this sketch whose birthday was on the same day of the same month as yours, your mother, February 12th, 1897. He would have been 14. So, so they shared the same birthday. Yes, and uh, the price is still up in the corner here, a dollar and a quarter. And it's a very colorful and in nice condition. One of my dad's favorite ways of teasing me was on February 12th, he would say to me, when I'm a youngster in grade school, when the teacher says today, what famous man was born today? I want you to stand up and say, my father. <laughs> and he wouldn't be lying. <laughs> and I didn't think that was very funny, and I never tried it. But as years gone by, why well, I treasure that as a yeah. great joke. And uh, My mother always used to say all great men were born in February. I guess she had her father was uh, born in February, and he told her that. Uh -huh. um, so, do you have any other Lincoln collectibles that you? Um, several other books. Books. I thought this was the most colorful. Yes, probably with it being your father's birthday, yes, he probably right. did have some things. Right. Well, I'd like to thank you both for being here today and sharing um, these Lincoln items with us. And thank you very much for being here. We enjoyed it too, thank you.